In Cage Busting Leadership, I tell a story relayed by Dan Weisberg, uh, who served as head of the Teacher Performance Unit in the New York City Department of Education. Dan Weisberg had been a big shot attorney outside of education when he was recruited by New York City Chancellor of Schools, Joel Klein, to come in and head the Teacher Performance Unit. When he first got to New York, one of the things Dan had been told was that one reason principals were hesitant to actually try to remove the least effective teachers was that you needed five observations in the can before you could even start to actually move on a teacher who was clearly ineffective. Problem, of course, is during those five observations would require perhaps an academic year or more, and during that period of time, you'd have a teacher in your building who was obviously frustrated with the principal, um, generating oftentimes you know, negative reactions. Well, Weisberg looked at this. He said when you looked at the contract, it seemed clear to him you only needed one observation to go ahead and initiate the process. He was wondering where the heck word came from that it was actually five. He thought, my goodness, it must be the unions. Well, turned out it was not the UFT. He said he finally found out that the culprit here was not any evil boogeyman from outside the system. It was the general counsel in New York City's Department of Education itself. And what had happened was the attorneys who worked for the system wanted to make sure they were bulletproof. They wanted everything to be clean and simple. And so what happened was they created huge barriers for principals and for district leaders when it came to addressing the teachers that nobody ought, thought ought to be working with the kids. Now, this isn't a case of where the union was to blame. This isn't some intractable problem of educational pedagogy. And this isn't really about changing laws. This is just about school and system leaders going ahead and acting professionally with the authority they already have. That's what cage-busting leadership is all about.